Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. A clutter coach and professional organizer, Julie also offers tips to help you get clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Today's show is sponsored by My Wardrobe Genie. My Wardrobe Genie is an easy, affordable way to organize clothes in your closet and make the clothing you want to wear easy to find in an organized closet when you want it. It means feeling good about what you select from your closet to wear each day. For more information, please visit allsetsolutions.com. Hey everyone, is your bedroom filled with clutter or is it a place where you can relax, rejuvenate, and rest? Is it a place where you can share love, create love, or is it another headache? We're going to talk about tips today to help you let go of clutter in your bedroom and create a sacred space so you can once enjoy that wonderful area of the home. Diane Stadnick is a trained professional organizer who works in Winnipeg and Southeast Manitoba, Canada. She's a president of the Women's Business Network, Southeast Manitoba, and an active member of Toastmasters International and Business Network International. Diane has several years of experience organizing homes, offices, and organization. She is well known for her practical and inspiring workshops that leave participants excited to take life and business to the next level. Her friendly and non-judgmental approach to working with people allows her to easily develop trust and credibility while working with clients. She enjoys public speaking and facilitating group discussions. In this way, she's able to share her expertise and organizing skills to help others succeed and thrive. Welcome, Diane. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm excited to be here today. Wow, she's a trooper, guys. You know, sometimes with technology, computers and everything, we had some glitches, but we're ready to roll. But let's get started. I'm very excited. I think that uh, I've seen people who their bedroom becomes overwhelmed with clutter, and it's not a place where they can enjoy things. So let's talk about that. How have people lost the loving feeling in their bedroom? Has it become a place of storage? What have you found? Well, I generally find with my clients, and I think in general, life is just tends to be speeding up. And a lot of times we come home, we're just rushed, and we live this hectic life. And at the end of the day, we just end up falling into bed at night, not really thinking about the kind of life we want to be living. We just get on this treadmill, and we just keep doing it day after day. We just go through the motions. But until we actually stop and think about the kind of life we want to be living and the kind of home we want to be living in, then we just end up, we, we just can't get off that treadmill. So what I do with my clients is help them to just assess their spaces and especially love working in master bedrooms because I think of all the spaces that I work with with people, I think the master bedroom is a place that makes a really big impact on our lives. I, I would agree with you 110% because if you're not nurturing yourself or getting sleep, that affects everything. Absolutely. It does affect us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So can you share some benefits to creating a sacred space in the bedroom? Health, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever you're open to. Yeah, well, when you think about it, our bedrooms are a place we actually spend, on average, about eight hours of our day. So that's about a third of our lives that we're spending in the bedroom. So if we walk into our bedroom and we're feeling overwhelmed and we just fall into bed because it's the only place that we have, you know, that one space left on the side of our bed that we fall into at the end of the day, it's really not, like you say, nurturing us. Um, we're not getting the rest we need. We're not sinking into that restorative sleep. And when you think about how sleep deprivation, we've probably, many of us have experienced it at some point in our lives, whether that's because we've had a baby or some other crisis in our life, but that sleep deprivation can certainly affect our physical beings. So whether, you know, when you're not sinking into that restorative sleep, we tend to age faster, we, uh, our memory will be affected, we will probably gain weight more easily and not be able to take it off, we're less alert, so that can help us, you know, that can actually cause accidents during our day. We're less patient with the people that we work with and the people that we love the most, and it just kills our sex drive. So physically, it's really important for us to be having a place where we can get that rest and restorative sleep at the end of the day. And mentally, when you think about it, um, when, when you're not getting that restorative sleep, our mental capacity is diminished as well. 
we worry a lot more, we're not able to focus on the tasks that we're trying to complete. Uh, when we're trying to make decisions, we don't really have clarity of mind. And, you know, all of when we actually embrace this uh, lifestyle of simplicity, I think that silence, if we can incorporate some silence into our lives, that can really help to ease our nerves as well. So definitely important mentally, as well as emotionally. When you think about if you've ever been sleep deprived, um, I had my first child was a colicky baby, so he slept maybe two or three hours at a time, and that was it. So uh, sleep deprivation for me, it it um, it made me almost pushed people away from me because I was so tired and I and I just couldn't give any more to anybody else. So I would just push them away and I would want to be alone. So if you can imagine keeping maintaining that over a long period of time, whether it be a month or a year when you're sleep deprived, you're certainly not going to be uh, having the kinds of relationships that you really want in your life. You're going to be pushing people away instead of pulling them closer to you, right? And creating that intimacy that we all want. And I believe that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. So for me, it's, it's all spiritual. And I'm really careful about what enters our master bedroom, what comes into that space, and whether that be an emotion like anger or frustration. I don't want it in my master bedroom. It could be um, just clutter that, you know, maybe unwanted gifts, that kind of thing, or gifts that are left over from previous relationships. I don't allow any kind of electronics in our bedroom. I prefer uh, just a quiet space that is gadget free. <laughs> and we don't collect a lot of clutter in our, our master bedroom either. So I think all of those things um, just help us when we think about those things and we're more conscious about it, that helps us to create a, a sacred space for ourselves. That's wonderful, and I agree. I see a lot of people have a TV in the bedroom, and I'm like, no way, we're not, you know, one TV is enough. We don't, we don't need more than, than one. Absolutely. Although yeah, I, I, we definitely keep it out of our bedroom. Although I think your new slogan should be reduce wrinkles, turn back aging, create a sacred <laughs> I think that's how you should promote your bedroom organizing surface. What, how, where have you found that people most commonly get stuck when it comes to making their bedroom a sanctuary? I think I really try to promote with my clients the, the whole idea that it's not just your physical clutter and that whatever clutter is in your space is a reflection of what's happening within you and within your relationships. So to deal only with that physical clutter, which you can do, but eventually, probably six months or a year down the road, you're going to end up right back where you started. And then you're going to wonder why you couldn't keep it maintained. So to improve that, it's often helpful just to you know, deal with those things that come up. And, and the emotions do come up when you're dealing with the physical clutter, whether it's an attachment to an item or it's a memory or maybe there's still anger you know, hiding underneath somewhere where you pull, out an item, you, know, you pull out an item from under your bed and you realize, okay, I haven't dealt with this yet because there's still mental and emotional baggage that comes with it. So dealing with all of it at the same time is really helpful in maintaining a clutter-free life. That's wonderful. So how do we create a sacred space in our bedroom? Well, when I start to work with a client, the first thing I do is just to ask them questions. Um, helping them to understand what their space is all about. What do they feel? You know, usually when I start with a client, I will just walk up to the bedroom entrance with them and just ask them, what, do they, what are they feeling when they look at the state of their bedroom? Are they overwhelmed by it? Or do they really want a room that will help them to feel refreshed when they walk into it? And hopefully, uh, we can get to a place where they are feeling refreshed by it. And that's, that's the intention. So I ask them questions, um, things like what they like about the room or what they don't like. Um, possibly, it, what are they tolerating? You know, is there a picture hanging on the wall that your somebody's mother handed down to them or gave as a gift, but neither one of them really like it? Is it still hanging on your wall, and are you tolerating it? Then it, maybe it's time to let it go and just pass it off to somebody who might enjoy it a little bit more than you do, right? <laughs> And I want them to know, I want them to understand what um, helps to promote a restful sleep and that loving feeling that they've lost. 
what are what are things that they could incorporate into the room. So I help them to start um, creating a dream and a vision for what they want the space to look like, and that usually helps them to take the steps forward in getting there. And um, there are always things that will interfere with our connecting and communicating with our our partners, right? Um, again, I mean, and, and I think if you're if you're sharing a room with someone, as most master bedrooms are, uh, I think that the space should be a reflection of both of you, not just one of you. So if you are thinking that you know you want floral patterns and lots of lace and pink colors and that kind of thing might be great. It might be right up your alley, but your partner may not think so. So ten tendency is to kind of meet in the middle somewhere, right? I mean, you may not, your partner may have a totally different idea of what that space should look like, but when you're incorporating both of your ideas together, that's when you're, you're also creating the intimacy in making those decisions together and creating a room that is, is you know, welcoming to both of you. So would you have any thoughts about someone that's single? Because I think, you know, I was single for a long time, and I think it's equally important to, you know, people would tell me in feng shui to create that space to bring in someone that you want. And, you know, we were talking about, if you know, when you're a couple, that's great, but self-love is so important, and so many of us don't love ourselves and are unkind. So do you have any thoughts for single people? Right, absolutely. I mean, in, in our master bedroom, we have, you know, two matching end tables and two matching lamps on the end tables. Um, we have photos of us sharing life together. Um, but those things are just as important if you're single uh, to, to create that space, even in your closet, or pull, making sure that the bed is pulled away from the wall so that you can have access from both sides. Things like that will, are, you know, just simple feng shui principles that you can incorporate into your bedroom. As well as, you know, another thing is not having a lot of clutter underneath your bed. That's a place where people tend to uh, store things. Those bed skirts aren't necessarily our friends <laughs> because they do just hide the clutter, right? They don't really, I mean, yeah, they look nice, but a lot of people just use it to hide the clutter that's under the bed. So just, yeah, incorporating those feng shui principles into your, into your bedroom and, and absolutely creating that space that says, I love you and I'm caring for myself, right? If you're, if you're by yourself in that bedroom, then just take the time to create a space that, that still reflects that um, restful and rejuvenated uh, environment for yourself. Make it happen. What touches do you suggest to create ambience? Do you use aromatherapy candles? What are your suggestions? Yeah, when I think ambience, I think, you know, I'm, a, I'm actually a very sensual person. I think we all are, but some of us probably know it more than others. Um, I think of creating a space that uh, touches all of your senses. And I know that when I was a child and I would go into a store, I'm, I'm a very tactile person, so I like touching things and feeling the texture of things. So for me, that's really important to bring into my space because whether it be a nice soft blanket or in satiny sheets or whatever it might be, I like that feel of things. So bringing that into your space is important as well as, you know, yeah, like you mentioned, the uh, scented candles maybe. Um, if you're sensitive to uh, artificial scents like I am, I, I tend to use just an unscented candle and drop a few drops of essential oils into it or putting the essential oils into my bath at the end of the day, those kinds of things. Um, also, you know, just quieting down at the end of the day. We tend to create uh, bedtime routines for our kids, and we think that's important. But yet when we get older, we forget that. We forget how important that is to us. So I suggest that uh, people just take the time at the end of the day, set aside an hour before you want to be asleep, and start to turn down the lights, maybe have a warm bath, listen to some soothing music, maybe just have some cuddle time in bed with your partner and, you know, just, just share some pillow talk at the end of the day, read a book. Those kinds of things are really important to winding down and um, creating that environment where you can have a restful sleep. I, but what I also like, and I want to talk about rituals, because before we were talking, you said, oh, I want to add something about rituals, because my husband works a swing shift, and so I've adjusted. I used to be in bed by 10, and, you know, he's not home before 1130, but it's very important for us to connect at the end of the day, check in, 
you know, okay, how was your day? How was work? And, you know, even if it's for five or ten minutes, still making that connection. What other suggestions do you have for rituals that you found to help bring back that loving feeling in the bedroom? Well, I think for sure you really need to connect with each other, whether it's just, you know, 10, 15 minutes before you fall asleep or at the dinner table, wherever it is. But creating that time and that space for those, that connection is important. Um, like you said, you know, just having that time to connect that, that few minutes of conversation, whether that be when you're still in the living room or your, your head's already hit the pillow. I mean, I wouldn't, obviously you're not going to talk about anything, you know, any major decisions while your head's on the pillow, but just to connect with each other and tell each other that you love each other. Maybe set aside some time for meditation or prayer. You know, even couples yoga is something that's, or couples massage is something that's becoming more and more common. So just having those times where, you know, maybe just a back rub or with some essential oil or just some non-sexual touch, you know, whether that be cuddling or massage, those kinds of things really help to create that connection between the two of you and just share, share a joke, share a little bit of laughter. It always lightens things up at the end of the day. And, you know, when you put your head on the pillow, the last thing I want to be listening to is the news, right? So that's part of the reason why I don't have a TV in my bedroom. Um, and I don't watch news at the end of the day. I'll, I'll listen to it, but not just before I'm going to bed. So those are all things that can really help you mentally as well as uh, just growing that intimacy in your relationship. Yeah, one thing that we do is my husband kisses me first thing in the morning, just a quick kiss and a quick kiss before we go to bed and before he leaves work but it's it's just kind of this comforting thing and it's again it's not it's non-sexual but it's very it's just a comforting thing and and I could tell you the one time I was busy at the computer working and I said to him later I'm like you didn't kiss me before you left for work because you know that's so part of our routine <laughs> Yeah, and I've also heard people who um, maybe will kiss their wedding rings, kiss each other's rings, or just, um, you know, clasp hands so that their rings are touching or something. You know, just a reminder of that commitment before you walk out the door for the day. Um, and, and at the end of the night, too, it's kind of nice to go to bed knowing that, you know, that your partner is there beside you. And, and even if they haven't said I love you, you know what, even just holding you holding you in their arms is, is says enough, right? So just, again, creating that non-sexual couple time. Now, how does rituals and creating sacred space in our bedroom open us up for more love? Well, I think it's something that has to start within each of us and our, in our homes is the, is the greatest place for it to start. I mean, if we want peace in the world, it really does have to start from within. So creating these kinds of sacred spaces and making our home a sanctuary where we come at the end of the day and where, you know, we, we let go of all those worries of the day and we come home just to be with our loved ones and reconnect, that's, that's what helps us get through our days, gets through the tough times, gets through the crisis in our lives. And I think when that peace starts to grow within, it creates, um, you know, it helps us to be more peaceful with our work relationships as well, and then and will spread into the world. But it also, um, you know, that is ultimately so important for it to start within each of us, so that we can spread it out to others. I absolutely love that you said that because the reason this is called clearing the clutter inside and out because wherever you start you're going to clear the clutter but I believe when you get let go of the clutter in your life then you can follow your dreams you can share your gifts with the world you can share your passions and as we do that then we help each other because as you heal I heal and if we start to rethink things in those terms then that's a, a, a kind of a grassroots movement to change the world in my view Absolutely. And when you think about somebody who's who's a hoarder, which, you know, isn't the type of client that I generally work with, but a hoarder in general, you will see like one pathway through the through their home. And if you can imagine that home being a reflection of their life, they have very limited opportunities in their life because of all that clutter. So if you're releasing all of that clutter from your life, you are going to allow in more opportunities. You're going to you're going to meet new and exciting people in your life who are going to open up those opportunities, and you will just have new and exciting experiences in your life. So yeah. definitely benefits to clearing that clutter, especially if you're not just for your relationships, but if you're someone in business. 
you know, you want to let go of that clutter and be able to let those new opportunities into your life and your career. Absolutely. Now, what would you say to someone? They're listening or they're going to watch this later and then they go into their bedroom and they're completely overwhelmed. It has a bunch of clutter or maybe they just have those pictures they don't like or knickknacks that they wanted to get rid of and have it. What would you say to them? They're standing there completely overwhelmed. <laughs> well, and you know what? I've walked into clients' homes too and felt overwhelmed myself, so I've had to walk myself through the process of just chunking it down. You know what? And that's what I do. I just say, okay, let's break this down. How, what can we start with, right? Just do it one step at a time. And when you when you start in a room, especially if it's one that's fairly cluttered, it is in general going to look worse before it starts to look better. So I kind of warn my clients about that, but also to keep the keep the end in mind know what your end goal is and create that vision for yourself whether it just be in your mind or actually creating a vision board maybe going through magazines and clipping out things that they like uh, that they might want to see in their bedrooms and hanging on to that vision just knowing that that end result is there right and it's just going to take chunking it down into baby steps in order to get there and you know what ask for help if you know, if our taps are leaking, we don't hesitate to ask for help from calling a plumber, but yet somehow when it's the clutter in our spaces, we sometimes hesitate thinking that, oh, I should be able to do this myself, or I'll just get a family member or friend to help me, which might work, but there are times when a family member or friend uh, becomes challenging because they might not ask you the right questions, they might not push you as, you know, maybe nudge you as much as you need to be nudged. So I think that actually having a professional organizer help you out can help in the sense that they offer a an objective opinion, a, a perspective, and they don't have all that emotional attachment to the things. I mean, if you're asking your sister to help you out, she might have more of an emotional attachment to something than you do. So <laughs> it's just going to create more issues for you, not less. So I think asking for help is is a big thing, and it, and it can be so helpful in our lives. That's wonderful. I agree with you 110%. Now, do you have any final thoughts on creating sacred space in the bedroom? Well, I think one of the things, I'm working with a client right now who has, um, she has some mobility issues um, and she has fibromyalgia, so she doesn't, she can't work for a long period of time. We work for two or three hours at a time and that's about all that she can manage. But what I'm finding with her is that um, you know, we've cleaned up some garbage, we've taken out recycling, we've had boxes go out for donation, you know, so we're making progress. But then I find I'll come the next week and she's gone shopping again. So one of my challenges to clients can be sometimes, you know, just stop shopping for a while. If you're, if you're going to work in your master bedroom and you want to create that sacred space, then just agree you know, make that commitment to yourself that you're not going to purchase any more for two or three four weeks while you work on your bedroom and clear out what you don't need and then really assess what you do need before you go shopping again. Don't just fill it with stuff. You know, it's okay to go out and buy a nice piece of art for your bedroom wall, but do it really intentionally and don't stop the shopping just for the, you know, short-term gratification. And that's one of the things that I ask my clients as well is when, when they do go shopping, I want them to ask themselves, is this item going to bring me long-term fulfillment or short-term gratification? And know that answer before you actually make the purchase. That's so fantastic. Are... Intentional shopping. Absolutely. Now, do you have any final thoughts on clutter in any area since you do more than the bedroom that you'd like to share? <laughs> um... You know, one of the other areas that I find is challenging for a lot of clients is that they go out shopping and they do all this bulk shopping for their kitchens, all this bulk food shopping. And it, it seems like a good idea it, it, because we're thinking about the saving of the money, but a lot of times it ends up creating more problems in our lives than it actually helps. So sometimes the dollar value isn't necessarily the deciding factor. It's good to save money, absolutely. I know we're all, you know, on tight budgets. But when your space only allows for so much in your pantry or your fridge or your cupboards, let that be your guiding, uh, what guides your decisions. 
So try not to do the bulk food shopping. <laughs> Outstanding. Now, Diane, please tell people how they can find out more information about you or if you have any books or any other good things you'd like to share. Yeah, well, you can visit my website and sign up for my newsletter. It goes out um, probably every two to three weeks whenever I get around to it. Um, you can also email me. My email address is Diane, D-I-A-N-E, at Embracing Simplicity A. And I do offer classes and workshops in the Winnipeg and surrounding area. And I do also have an estate organizing workbook that I um, that help my clients to get their important documents in order. I don't offer financial or legal advice, but it but it's a workbook that will help you um, just start the conversation with your partner for one thing, and uh, it helps you to pull together all of those important things so that you have them in one place and kind of creates an executor package so that your executor won't be spending quite as much time trying to sort through everything should something happen. Excellent. Well, I want to thank Diane of Embracing Simplicity. You've got a lot of great tips to clear the clutter from your bedroom today and to create that sacred space. So go out and clear some clutter and create the life you want, deserve, and desire. Thanks again to My Wardrobe Genie for sponsoring today's show. My Wardrobe Genie is an easy, affordable way to organize clothes in your closet and make the clothing you want to wear easy to find in an organized closet when you want it. It means feeling good about what you select from your closet to wear each day. For more information, please visit AllSetSolutions.com. Thanks for joining us on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. You can find out more about Julie Caraccio and her services at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.